Hey guys, what is up? My name is Panda Master, and we are here today with a little analysis video. I basically want to talk to you guys today about a video game that's coming out on the 1st of September. No, it's not Metal Gear, it's Mad Max. Alright, so this game is coming out soon, and it doesn't have a lot of, like, you know, fan base. It is, okay, it is pretty popular, but a lot of people still don't know what it is because it's basically a video game based off of a movie series from the 70s and 80s and that just came out with another movie this year. Uh, just want to mention, I just saw it last weekend, finally, and it was amazing. So, uh, that's e made my hype even bigger for the game. Um, but I have been hyped for this game. This is one of my most hyped games of the entire year. I think it's going to be spectacular. I feel like it could be another Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, another surprise amazing game and so today we are here to discuss that and what i ex hope to see in the game and what you guys want to see um uh, uh so yeah let's get into it uh if you do not know mad max is a post-apocalyptic action adventure game and it has a heavy em emphasis on vehicular combat because that is a big thing in the movies and it, I, I haven't seen the old ones i'm sorry i'm sorry i haven't i've only seen fury road but um, it does. It's a big focus on vehicular combat. I'm pretty sure every action scene in the movie, except one, was in a vehicle. Um, and so you play as the eponymous character Mad Max. And so, according to the publisher, 60% of the game's campaign requires the player to drive. That's a whole bunch of driving. Um, I do want to mention this is made by Avalanche Studios, which is the same developer that has made the Just Cause series. Um, but yeah, I, oh jeez, this is going to be so awesome. Um, a big thing about this is, like I said, the vehicular combat, and instead of more customizing your character, which you can do, you can customize him, with getting him better armor and all that stuff, but the big customization is on your car. Alright, so your car is the magnum opus, the, your uh, inhibitor, or whatever, the, I don't know. Your car, it's, he, see, the car is not in Fury Road, so I don't know it. I think it was, though, because it got, like, trashed in the first five minutes. But, anyway, um, the, your car, your big car from the Mad Max film series gets absolutely wrecked, and you are beat up in the beginning of the game, and then you barely survive, and so you find, you have to come up with this replacement car, uh, to get out of there. You have to, to survive. You have to build your up a new car and to get out of Dodge, you know, do, do your thing. And that car is the Magnum Opus. So you can customize that thing any way you want. You can have a body. Uh, if you pre-order now, you can get an exclusive body called the Ripper. Uh, that looks awesome. And, yeah, uh, yeah, you can customize it however you want, uh, all kinds of stuff. But a big thing about it is the whole risk and reward thing that you, like, for vehicle customization, you can't just max out everything, because that's not possible, because you'll be a crappy car. To do that, you need to come up with a balance. Like, do you want to be a tank? Because if you are a tank, then you won't have much speed. And so you're going, yes, you'll have all the weapons and stuff, but you won't have that speed that you're looking for. And you'll basically just have to, like, come to terms with the fact you're not going to get anywhere quickly or you're not going to escape a hairy situation you just kind of got to get through with it or you can be a slim little thing that isn't much on the weapon side but can go really fast and all that like you have to find that medium you, you, uh, to keep going it's all on your customization and you can't there's no set thing you can't max out everything it's not a possibility in this game this game is all about finding your own style and mixing and matching things to get the perfect combination for you and also there can be a multiple there can be multiple builds you can make multiple builds try them out uh maybe for one mission you need like a tank like thing that will be very good uh for if you're maybe in close quarters anyway so you don't care about speed do that tank and then another mission requires you to be fast and so you want to do this like there's some sort of chase mission you then you can select that build and yeah i mean i think it's really cool um the whole thing about upgrading and getting like upgrading your car and customizing it is using this thing called scrap and with scrap you can um uh you collect around in the world it's just scattered around the world you collect it that's your money so you can go and buy 
customizations. It used to be you'd have to go to a, a stronghold and it would give you a um it would give you a garage that where you would customize. But now since they realized that that could be kind of annoying, they changed it so now it's just in the menu so that you can customize whenever you want. They did take out some of the realism, but you know, it's whatever. Uh I guess they can kind of have chum bucket uh construct it for you. But uh as I am saying that, Chum Bucket is your NPC little helper guy who is in the, he's actually in the cover, uh, on the back of your car. You meet him very early on. He's the first guy that you meet after you get basically beat up by, um, the war, warheads. I think, well, not, they're not warheads. They're, I, I'm sorry, I'm a noob to the Mad Max franchise, so I don't know a whole ton about it, but I love Fury Road, but, um, those war guys. After they beat you up, he's the first person you see afterward, and he kind of wants to help you out because he wants to build the ultimate car. So he wants to help you out because, <clears throat> and he thinks of you as a saint because you're such a good car driver and stuff like that. Um, so he helps you about. He's like your mechanic. Uh, when you're driving your car and you stop, um, he will repair the car um, while it is stopped, and um, uh, he will. He fires most of the weapons. He fires the, um, the th he g throws thunder sticks and does the harpoon and the thunder poon. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. Um, but he does most handles most of the weapons except your famous shotgun and the sniper rifle that can only be controlled by you. So yeah, Chum Bucket is a really cool NPC, and I'm excited to be playing as him. And yeah, uh, there's also he does hide when. Th people jump on your car because that is a thing so people can jump on your car and try to blow up your car and when that happens he go like chump bucket goes and hides inside the car instead of being on the trunk he will hide in the car and that means that you've lost most of your weapons so it's just basically a good idea to get him off as fast as possible so chum can get back out and start shooting more stuff but it's also really cool because one of the things you can do instead of just like throwing him off, you know what I mean, it's just like, you know, blow his face off with a shotgun, which is really cool, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, Chum Bucket, awesome NPC, people jump on your car, uh, yeah, um, the big thing with, like, I want to mention more about vehicular combat is that when you are driving and when you are facing different, like, vehicular enemies, uh, when you are aiming your harpoon or anything like that, it does enter a sort of slow motion, and you can toggle between targets and all that, and yes, it is in third person's perspective, but you can get a first person view, you can switch, but that probably will be very, very hard combat-wise, so I suggest not doing that when you're in combat. So, another thing, like I said, uh, scrap is all around the place. And so, if you really do want to upgrade your magnum opus as quickly as possible, and you want to keep, like, be as OP as physically possible for these main missions, well, you can just go, scrap is everywhere, just explore, and that is a big thing in this game. This is an open world, this is a linear game, you can go anywhere you want, uh, if you can see it, you can go there, uh, you can, they have said that the further away from the place they want you to go, um, I don't know what that exactly means. I don't think that means if you get further away from just the main mission. I think it's just further away you get from any, th like, any sort of, m like, mission or anything. The further in the map you get, the harder, the more the threats shall be. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it, it is... It does get difficult as you go out there, but you can go anywhere you want. Exploration is key, and they want you to do that because they have a lot of icons on the map. The map is huge. If you've seen it before, um, there's so much stuff to do, but there is a lot of stuff they said that, that isn't even on the map. That is just things that can happen as you're driving. It's just like random occurrences, random things that aren't on the map, and that's an awesome thing to do. Awesome, awesome, awesome to go explore and just be able to just drive around and find cool things that isn't on the map and that normal people wouldn't just find that you have to look around for and it looks really and it just sounds really really awesome and that kind of captures captures the aspect of the game and kind of one of the big reasons why I'm excited for it is because with this exploration it feels it kind of makes things feel like it you it is a Mad Max movie at least like in the vein of Mad Max Fury Road, where there's not as much plot. While there is a plot, it's not so much focused on the plot. 
as it is on survival. What can I do to go get from day to day? And even the plot of this game, like the whole plot of the game is him just trying to get his magnum opus all ready to go so he can get out of the wasteland, like this part of the wasteland. And even then, like, it, it's it's not a complex plot or anything. It's just, I need to survive. I need to build up my car. And that's not a bad thing. I think it's super great. I love that for Fury Road. Um, I just, I loved it about how it's not just, it doesn't have to be some complex plot that it's just, it is. It's about surviving day to day. And this game kind of feels like that. I know it's not technically a survival game, but it can be that way, just surviving. Um, I don't know if the game continues after you've beaten it. I would assume so, but that would be really fun afterwards just to explore and just try and survive. Um, maybe even, well, no, that's, that's stretching it, but um, I think that the survival aspect of the game is very, very big, and I think that it is a very, very important part of the game and will definitely be a good addition to the game, not just the whole plot aspect but just the survival aspect about having to need these resources like fuel and fuel is a big thing in this game fuel is uh, very essential your car does use up fuel and when you add different things you add more weight that uses up more fuel and so you do have to think about that too you have to think about fuel consumption and so you have to find fuel it is scattered around just like scrap and water and anything else we will talk about more about that, more about that later but like I said fuel is very important you have to be able to have some on hand you can put fuel in the back of your trunk for emergencies but uh, you can't there you have to find fuel around the area and you have to search for it so you have to use your fuel sparingly especially some of the things you have flamethrowers attached to your car that blow out flames to the side that uses a lot of fuel so you have to use that sparingly and it all just like everything is all centered around each other like everything affects everything like, you can't just do something and be like, oh, well, I'm out of that. Well, that's okay. Oh, crap. I just messed up three other things. Like, you, you have to think before you do all these things. And that sort of kind of strategy about it is really, really awesome. And I'm really excited to get into that. Um, so you have your fuel that you need to keep track of. And I also mentioned earlier, just a little bit earlier, about water. Because you do need water. Now, I'm not sure. To my knowledge, I don't believe you need water to drink. Like, I don't think you have a thirst or a hunger for that part, but to heal, you need to drink water. And that you also have to find scattered around the wasteland, and there is food. Like, I've seen him eat dog food and all that. Um, so I believe that that only affects your health. I do not think there is a t there is a thirst and hunger meter, but I could be wrong, but I am fairly certain there isn't. It is just mainly focused on your health. So... Yes, that is another thing. A lot of resources you have to look around the wasteland, and that definitely helps with the survival aspect and definitely gives the game more depth. So the landscape of this whole game, the setting of the whole game, it is wasteland. But the, um, in commentary with the developers when they were showing off gameplay, they said that they started the design making an actual city, making everything, well, make, not necessarily city, but just making different places and... Uh, different sites and then they added the wasteland aspect to it they basically just nuked the whole map and like so there is there are places to go to and this is not those are another thing that isn't marked on the map and that you have to explore to find out like you could find a playground or a park or a gas station or something like that and then that is kind of like a thing that you wouldn't get if you just rush through the game that you have to explore and have to experience for yourself and it's just a special moment in the game where maybe you see what it could have been like if this hadn't have happened and I know that technically we already have that now outside but it is cool to kind of get a little tiny like little bit little piece of lore you know just seeing what it what what it could have been like what the world before the wasteland was like even though we kind of are living in it right now. I think it's really cool, really like that. It does uh, definitely uh, make the idea of exploring fun and awesome. And yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, so the game world is broken up into several regions, uh, much like uh, the Arkham games and the just kind of any 
a lot of RPGs. Okay, it's just a lot of games. It's <laughs> broken into regions. With each region having its own unique backstory and landscape, there's lots of strongholds in the regions that you can do. And that's another big thing, strongholds. Strongholds you have to go to, and they are run by some sort of person that is uh, that is fighting against uh, Scrotus, which is the warlord, the war boys. That's what I was thinking of, the war boys. Okay. But they're run by the warlord Scrotus, and these people who hold the strongholds are against Scrotus, and you basically have to ally with them to either get resources or just to help you with your car, give you scrap, all that stuff. But you have to be aligned with them. Help them out. They can help you out. Um, some people are more uh, rude, I guess, than others. Uh, you have to do more things for some people than others. Some people are nice. Some people are not. And, yeah, I mean, it's definitely um, cool. Each region in the game will have its own boss, which can be found and defeated at their base. And so friendly strongholds are in the game. And so if you establish a friendly relationship with them by, limit my, like, taking out enemies... Uh, it will give Max new quests and rewards and all that. Um, so I already mentioned about the resources in the game. Um, yeah, so food and water are vital for Max's survival in the game. So Max can venture into what they call the Big Nothing, which is, like I kind of said before, an unmapped, volatile area of the wasteland that is consumed by dangerous sandstorms without any food or water present. Rare parts for the Magnum Opus can be found there. And then Max can eat small animals such as rodents and maggots from decomposing corpses to replenish his health. Areas where Max can find food and supplies have crows flying around. So, so like I was kind of saying, the big nothing is like an unmapped thing where you can just go. And there are good parts that, like, there are reasons to go there. But it's much, much harsher. There's more enemies and there isn't any food or water around. So, yeah, that is a big thing. So there is a day and night cycle in this in here, and there's a lot of environmental hazards, like I said before, kind of mentioned with uh, sandstorms and all that. Um, they are going to be included in the game, and the terrain of the world will also be affected by the weather. So you know, a lot of it is sand, so it will be blown around, and that is really really cool. I do like the uh, the changeable environment, and yeah, I mean, and it's like to see all the environment, there are these sort of like vantage points that are in the game. They're uh, in the form of hot air balloons, and you basically go and you. There are some people. There are some uh, enemies around. You clear them out, and you uh, detach the uh, hot air balloon, which is anchored down basically. So you have to uh, unanchor it pretty much, and then you can ride up the hot air balloon and basically survey the area and look for interesting things and uh, strongholds and all that, and it will open up stuff on your map. And so, yeah, that's kind of like your vantage points, uh, your sync points in Assassin's Creed, kind of like that. You know, you know that type, that vein, that type of stuff. Because Max views them with his binoculars, which definitely are post-apocalyptic. He definitely say those good, good for him. So, uh, I'm sorry if I'm. It is realistic. Like I'm not hating on it. It's never mind. Just <laughs> scratch all that I said. So. Many gameplay choices are given in the game, such as either playing silently or aggressively. They do definitely recommend uh, different play styles. Um, they, you can go in and have it stealth. There is a thing where you can actually, you can get into enemy vehicles, and you can use them to get into strongholds by like a Trojan horse type of thing, where you can go in and not be detected, and then bust out while while they were being stupid, and then you can wreak havoc on them. Um, maybe even call in Chum Bucket, uh, because if you are away from your car, you can send up a flare and it will alert Chum Bucket to your location and he will drive the car to you. That would be a good thing to use then, to kind of go hand to hand for a little bit until Chum Bucket can get to your location, you can get in the car and then wreak havoc on them noobs. And like I was, um, like I mentioned before about the hand to hand combat, there is a free, th a free th combat it's not just vehicular and it is a lot similar to the Batman Arkham games um, it's I, a lot simpler like it's not very complex but there is this new uh, parry system where instead of having a simple counter button the counter button has a circle that slowly goes down and if you time it right you can get a perfect parry which can deal a lot of damage to the enemy and it's really good and that can definitely give you more uh, a bigger combo and that will get your fury meter up and the fury meter is basically your kind of rage mode where if you bring it up then you can do substantially more damage than usual and it's he's basically in a frenzied state so um max can actually get 
guidance from Chum about how he can complete his objectives strategically. He can ask him about uh, what would be good ways to do it and he can help you out. So that's kind of like a hint type thing. And like I said, Chum will repair the car for the player once the player exits the car. So if you want to know about the actual, like a little bit more about the plot of the game. So Max is, Max is actually going to the Plains of Silence. Now he take now what happens is, like I said earlier, a group of war boys run him off of the road, steals clothes, his supplies, his weapons, and his car before leaving him to rot in the desert sun. And then that's where he meets Chum Bucket, and then they uh, it's Interceptor. That's what it is. Yeah. So yeah, they they partner up and set out in the base of the Opus. And so basically, that's kind of it. They base they have to get the Magnum Opus as great as they can, looking for food, water, allies, upgrades. And yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be super, super fun. It is set to be released on September 1st, 2015 in North America, the second in Australia, and the third in Europe for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Uh, back a couple months, a few months ago, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions were canceled because of their hardware restrictions. Um, a Steam OS version of the game is um, coming. And like I said earlier, if you pre-order the game, you can get uh, an additional Magnum Opus design called the Ripper. And the Ripper, alongside a steel book, a collector's box, a mini f license plate, and a Blu-ray copy of Mad Max Fury Road, is included in the game's post-apocalypse edition. And players who purchase the game for the PlayStation 4 can gain access to an exclusive content called Ro Road Warrior Survivor Kit. So lots of cool stuff there if you can get it early. And guys, that is about it um, for my little video explaining Mad Max. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment what you are ex like the most excited for in Mad Max, and I'll see you guys next time for whatever it is I'm doing. Alright, see ya.